In lesson one, we're going to learn what Microsoft Access is and what it's used for. You will learn some database terminology. We'll discuss the benefits of a database, and we'll learn about the parts of a Microsoft Access database, including tables, queries, forms, and reports. Before we get started working with Access today, let's go over some of the basic database terminology. A computer database is a program that lets you store, organize, and manipulate data. Databases are great for storing large amounts of information. You can use a database to organize that information by generating different reports and queries. You can use a database to manipulate the data and actually make changes to it. In the days before computers, data would be stored on paper, usually in ledger books or on index cards. For example, to keep track of your customers, you'd make a series of index cards with one customer per card. You'd have a separate drawer of cards for the products that you sold or the suppliers that you did business with. However, as efficient as this may have seemed at the time, it was very time consuming to sort through the cards or to search through a large drawer of cards for some particular bit of information. When the first computers came along, the earliest databases were really nothing more than glorified text documents. They were great for storing information, and they certainly made searching and sorting easier. However, they lacked many features we take for granted today, such as the ability to recognize relationships between the different types of data. For example, you could have a list of customers with some basic details, but if you want to look up information on their purchases, you would have to look in a different file. The earliest databases had no way to relate this information together. This creates many problems, including having multiple copies of the same information in different places, such as the customer's name and address. Updating all that information can be a nightmare. Fortunately, Microsoft Access does recognize relationships, and that's one of its strong points, but much more on that later. The next progression was for people to store their data in spreadsheets like Microsoft Excel. Excel is a great tool for storing small amounts of information and for analyzing data, but when it comes to large amounts of information, using Excel can be cumbersome. If you've got more than a few hundred rows of data, you really should be using an Access database. Plus, Excel has the same problem that early databases did. It's not relational. There's no way to link your customers to their orders or products to their suppliers and so on. In addition, Excel can be difficult for novice users to work with. If you don't know how to use Excel, finding the information that you want can be daunting, whereas with Access, you can build a nice user-friendly interface for beginners to easily find their way around. Plus, it's much easier to secure an Access database than an Excel spreadsheet to keep people from messing with data they shouldn't be playing with. With an Access data, you can control exactly what people can do in your program. So this brings us finally to the modern database. In my opinion, Microsoft Access is the best desktop database application available. An Access database can store large amounts of data much more efficiently than Microsoft Excel or a simple text document. Access databases are also relatively easy to set up compared to other database platforms. An Access database can recognize relationships between your data. For example, if you keep track of customers and their orders, you can store all of your customer details in one place and all of their order information in another place. Access can relate those two together so you don't need lots of redundant information copied throughout your database. You don't need to, for example, copy all of the customer's information to each order that he places. The database can track that for you automatically. One of the problems with spreadsheets and older database applications is that you have little or no control over what kinds of information get put into your database fields. With Access, you can specify exactly what types of data the user can type into each field. This will prevent, for example, a number where the customer's last name should be, or a four-digit phone number being entered, or a missing zip code. Access gives you strict controls over the structure of your data, and that's a great thing. Yes, it's possible to set up some simple data validation in Excel, but Access is much more powerful. Access is a great tool for you to build databases for other people to work with. You can design a very user-friendly interface so they don't get lost. 
all of the data entry forms and reports that they need to work with can be presented for them in a nice simple menu. Plus, since you, the developer, control the interface, you can easily secure your database and lock them out of sections they shouldn't see. Sure, there's a little bit of a learning curve to initially get your database set up, but once it's built, you will definitely save time in the long run and increase productivity. Now, Access is a great tool by itself, and I've personally built Access databases that have run very small companies with two to five employees and fairly large businesses with hundreds of employees. Access can certainly handle a lot of traffic. However, if you do eventually outgrow your Access database, you don't have to lose all of your work. You can upscale your database to a more powerful back-end database server like Microsoft's SQL Server. You simply send all the tables and the data up to the server, and you can keep the interface you've built, the forms, reports, queries, and so on. You get the rapid application development of Microsoft Access and the power of SQL Server behind it. Let's talk about the parts of a Microsoft Access database. An Access database consists of data and the tools to work with that data. What are these tools? An Access database consists of tables, queries, forms, reports, and optionally macros and modules. Tables are used to store data. All of the data in your Access database will be stored in one or more tables. Queries are generally used to organize data. Forms are used to display data on the screen and to edit that data. Reports are for printing out data or formatting information for the printed page. Optionally, for more advanced users, macros are used to automate tasks and modules give you the full Visual Basic programming language inside your Access database. Now, I have macros and modules grayed out because you can build a fantastic database in Microsoft Access without ever using a macro or writing a line of code. I cover macros and VBA module programming in my developer level classes. But all you really need are tables, queries, forms, and reports. All of the data in your Access database is stored in one or more tables. You can think of a table like a single Microsoft Excel spreadsheet. However, tables give you much more control over the types of data that can be input into them. For example, here you see part of a customer table. Tables are made up of a collection of fields. Each field holds a specific type of data. For example, here I have highlighted the last name field in red. This field should only store the customer's last name and nothing else. In fact, you can specify rules in the database to force fields to contain only certain types of information, like text, numbers, dates, currency values, and so on. Fields are sometimes referred to as columns, just like in an Excel spreadsheet. All of the data concerning one item is stored in a record. Each record consists of the collection of all of the fields of data for that item. In this customer table, for example, each record represents one customer. Here I've highlighted one customer, James Kirk, in red. You can think of a record like a row in an Excel spreadsheet. You might not always be storing customers. A product table, for example, holds information on products, and each record would represent one product. An order table, for example, holds information on each order that's placed, where one record would represent one order. A contact history table, for example, like the one shown here, could store information about each time you talk to your customer. Every phone call, email, etc. will be stored as a separate record. In a timesheet table, for example, each record might represent one instance of an employee clocking in or out. Your tables can store many different types of data, people, places, events, and so on. You should store one type of data per table. Your customer table should hold information on your customers. You wouldn't store product information in your customer table. One of the mistakes that beginners make is they try to store too much information in one table. For example, you wouldn't try to store all of a customer's orders in the customer table. You'd use a second table for that. The data in your tables might not be stored in any particular order. You may have hundreds of thousands of records in your table, and the boss says to you, I want to see a list of only customers from Florida 
sorted by last name. That's what a query is used for. A query can be used to display data in different ways. You can sort your data or apply criteria to only a few specific fields. Queries can be saved and used later, so you don't have to keep redesigning them, and someone with little access knowledge can run your query simply by double-clicking on it. Queries can also be used to modify data, add records, delete records, or edit records. We'll learn more about these types of queries called action queries in our expert classes. For today, just keep in mind that queries let you view the data in your tables in different ways. Forms are used for viewing and editing data on your screen. Forms allow you to build a nice user-friendly interface to work with data. Whether you're building a database for just yourself or for other people to work with, forms are a major time saver. You can display information however you want. You can include just the types of data that you want your users to work with. You can combine information from multiple tables, such as displaying a summary of a customer's orders on the customer form. You can secure your fields so users can only modify specific fields and can only see other types of data. You may not want all of your employees pulling up credit card numbers, for example. You can also display calculations on your forms, such as the total number of days an employee missed work. Your forms can also contain drop-down lists called combo boxes so users can select data. Command buttons allow us to perform tasks such as opening other forms or finding records. In fact, you can turn a form into a main menu for other forms. The benefits of working with forms go on and on, but essentially you'll build the interface with which users will work with your data out of forms. You never want your end users to work directly with your tables you'll build them nice pretty forms they can use to work with the database. Reports are specifically designed to present data to people who are not using your database. You can print a report out. You can send it to someone as an email attachment or as a PDF file. You can use reports to generate all kinds of data, customer information, invoices, product catalogs, mailing labels, charts, and lots more. Anything you want to present to someone else can be designed as a report. A lot of times people interchange the words form and report. In Microsoft Access, they're very specific terms. A form is worked with on the screen, whereas a report is generated to be printed out, or at least saved as a printable document. We don't print out forms, and we generally don't work with reports on the screen. You generate them, then you print them out, or you send them to someone. An Access database can optionally contain macros and or modules. These are more advanced topics that I cover in my developer classes. In a nutshell, macros are generally used to automate repetitive tasks or to carry out simple actions, like opening a form. Modules contain the full Visual Basic programming language and can really take your database to a professional level. The good news is you can build a really great database without ever touching a macro or writing a line of code. So if you don't consider yourself a programmer, don't worry about it. You don't have to know these things to build great access databases. But on the other hand, they are very easy to learn in my developer classes.